Well, folks, as I said, that is a track of John Fairhurst's brand new album, Saltwater, and it's a real pleasure to be joined on the phone by the man himself. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much indeed. How are you doing? I'm doing not too bad. It's got to say, John, what a fabulous album. Thank you very much indeed. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. <laughs> I will put my hand up now and um, say embarrassingly that I was not aware of your music until this album popped into my inbox. Well, I, I guess, I guess my pre, I guess my press off press guys are doing their job properly now. Then, so. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess I guess that's the way it works. But I'm, I'm very glad you got it anyway. Well, it's, uh, I mean, to say it's right up my street, uh, as regular listeners know, I have a bit of an eclectic taste, and this is just um, such a mixture of blues, blues rock, a bit of bluegrass, a bit of everything, really, you've thrown in on this one. Well, I mean, I've, I've been into all sorts, and you know, I remain into, like, all sorts of different kinds of music, and, you know, bits of stuff from all over the world, and obviously I've sort of went through my metal stage as a kid and, you know, really into my sort of, like, 60s rock and roll and cats and beef out and Tom Waits and my early blues and, you know, Indian music and all sorts of things, really. So it, it all just ends up in there. I guess, like, this album is a sort of... It, I guess it's like a marker point in time of everything that I've everything that I've played and been into up to this up to this point, really. It's sort of, like, quite a cathartic experience making this album, to be honest. And so, like, there's a bit of everything got in there, I guess. Well, to my ears, um, if I'm going to sort of label what your voice is like to me, I mean, I mean the influences I hear, definitely, obviously, C6 Steve comes up to the top of the mix. Certainly a lot yeah. of Billy Gibbons are, is in there. And also <laughs> my old chum Mark Chapman from Medicine Hat. There's a bit of that thrown in as well. Yeah, I can, yeah, I can see. I mean, obviously, I'm really, I'm really into all of these guys, and they're sort of very much in the in the in the kind of uh, world of what I'm what I'm doing with this album, I guess. Which I mean, it's been a bit of a change for me because I've been I was doing sort of a lot more acoustic kind of blues stuff before, really. Um, but I've always wanted to have a three piece rock and roll band. That's basically been my dream since I was a, a, a first heard Jimi Hendrix. Um, so it's sort of got round to that point eventually now, which I'm more than happy about. So what uh, what changed you from sort of uh, the heavier side of things more over to sort of this obviously this blue side of the uh, of the spectrum, so to speak? Well, I mean, like like so, I've always been my, my dad sort of brought me up listening to like you know um, like loads of early blue stuff really, uh, sort of taught me how to play slide guitar and you know that's that's a really really heavy influence that runs through everything and then. Yeah, I mean, like, like I say, I mean, like a live show is actually getting sort of even heavier than the stuff on the album now. Really, like, so it's sort of getting quite, quite interesting. Um, and then, you know, I'm it's really into like my Cats and Beef Art and like Led Zeppelin and Hendrix and you know uh, mm. Rory Gallagher, all those kind of guys. And um, you know, it's just something I've always really wanted to do. I, 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 the, uh, a drummer Toby, he's come from a sort of more sort of like like metal and hardcore kind of background, really. Um, um, Pete Pete's quite into his like prog and all all kinds of different stuff for bass players. So it's just sort of we're, we're we're all basically doing what we wanted to do when we we're teenagers, but we can play now. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say. Um, obviously, like your, your drummer, uh, the obviously uh, the, the musical sort of taste and influence that he comes from. Because I found that with a, with certainly a few blues bands that are around at the moment that um, when you delve into musicians, their background tends to be something entirely different, and they've taken a real swing round, and as you say, got into something that's, I don't know, not necessarily scared to do before, but I think that um, this sort of music is more open to the market now, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a, there's a huge sort of resurgence in, in blues and rock and roll, really, these days. I mean, you, you see, I mean, there's a few years ago, there weren't... There weren't you sort of certainly see, you know, around and about. I mean, when I moved to Bristol, Bristol isn't known for its sort of rock and roll scene, really. Um, but, you know, there's, a, there's a, few, a few bands really coming through. I mean, like, um, uh, sort of, there's a band called uh, The Greasy Slicks, the young lads have been playing with quite a lot. And, you know, just like the Saturday night in Glastonbury, you've got Robert Plant, Metallica, uh, and Jack White. I mean, Jack White has done a lot. You know, bands like Jack White and the Black Keys and... Um, various other people out there's like bands like Royal Blood and stuff coming up and mm. the skulls real sort of move back towards that kind of stuff which is which is great you know trying to get blues gigs in the 90s was really difficult <laughs> well I guess other bands like Rival Sons and people like that have sort of brought it more uh, almost mainstream exactly exactly it's been a big sort of shift towards that which which is great you know mm. uh, people getting back into, into that kind of and people like Joe Bonamassa and um, you know, there's a real sort of resurgence in and real interest in blues and in rock and roll again, which is a great thing. And it's sort of, it's a very, it's a very British thing, I think, as well, isn't it? You know, 
I think um, you're absolutely right. Certainly, um, w when I talk to um, American artists and American um, American friends or uh, blues artists, and they say, well, you know, if we want a decent gig, we've got to come to Britain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I mean, is where the blues market is. Well, that and Holland, and, and also, funnily enough, Russia is, is starting to get a bit of a blues market as well, which is a bit weird. I mean, France, to be honest, as well. I went out to France a lot uh, last year with a band called Hey Moonshaker, who played two lads, um, Andy's from Wakefield, Dave Crowe's from Hereford, like a beatboxer and blues guitar player and singer. Right. Um, it was sort of like really quite pushing the boundaries of what blues is, but it's modern blues, really. But that's what it on. needs. That is exactly um, what it needs. I mean, what, what I'm quite interested in is, 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 is like modern blues now about, you know, singing about what's going on now rather than sort of harking back to sort of 1930s days and catfish and whiskey. I don't think that sort of really relates to <laughs> our lives today as blues musicians, you know. It's not, you know, we're from Hereford and Wakeford and Wigan and Bristol and other places, you know. And that's, that's what I'm finding really interesting is, is sort of like how blues is developing and, and you know, becoming a modern form of music again, really. Well, it's like the old joke, isn't it? When you play a blues record backwards, um, your wife comes back and your dog doesn't die. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it's France. It's France is really great. I had the opportunity to go out to uh, uh, France and do a tour with Johnny Winter at the end of 2012. He's obviously one of my sort of, you know, particularly as an electric slide guitar player, mm. Power X, sort of my absolute heroes, you know. And had a really great reception in France. You know, France is a, a big place for blues and rock and roll. Yeah. Um, but I do enjoy I do enjoy going out there a lot. Um, I mean, I guess the sort of blue, the kind of rock and roll blues scene has, has carried on in America, and it's sort of it's been up and down here. It was definitely down for a long time, and it's definitely it's, it's it's really good to see things like on on the way back up and up, really, and you know the new bands that are coming out and new takes on stuff, and you know obviously we're all products of our influences, and there's some really great influences in there. Um, but it's just nice to see the sort of resurgence of that and what you know what sort of uh, people are doing with it today, really, you know. Well, Mr. Bit, my own personal taste, I mean, I'm certainly more towards, shall we say, the dirtier end of the blues uh, market. Yeah. I mean, I, I was always, when I first got into blues, which will be back, ooh, back a, a long, long time ago, back in, the, back in the 80s, and I was looked at by my mates as being a little bit weird because I was into so much hard rock, etc., but I also liked to go and see blues artists. But now maybe, uh, maybe I was right all along, and... You, you see a real mix of an audience, I think, now. It's it's not all old men of a sort of, yeah, 50, 60 years old. Um, oh, far from it now. I mean, like, you know, it's quite interesting because we've been, we've been playing like a lot of like the UK festival circuit. Yeah. Of which, to be honest, there's not a lot of rock and roll bands around. On You know, there's a few festivals we played at where we were certainly the only sort of, like, you know, rock, blues kind of band there, you know. Um, but it's been really interesting to see the like the kind of people, the kind of audiences, and it's a real age range from sort of like teenagers all the way up to people in their seventies and older, you know. Um, it's which is obviously it depends on the kind of place that you play and the kind of thing that you go on. But you know, we regularly have a very mixed crowd of people, like a really sort of diverse age range. Which yeah, you know, again, it's sort of it's it's really good rather than just sort of like playing for sort of. Um, you know, like an older crowd or a really younger crowd, but to have a real mixture of people of all different ages and all sort of different influences in music is, yeah, that's, that's sort of one of the most fun bits of all, really, I think. Well, I think you've got to hand it to uh, acts like Virgin Accelerators and maybe the River Monkeys and people like that, that they've brought a younger crowd in. Suddenly it, it is seen as, as being something to be into and not to be ashamed of. Well for, for, well, for sure, for sure. You know, I think it's just sort of... I think sort of people, in some respects, sort of forgot how good blues and rock and roll is. <laughs> it seems like, hang on a minute, I really, really like this. Well, it's um, just decent live music at the end of the day, regardless what label you want to put on it. It's it's good, exactly. honest live music. Exactly. I mean, and that's, you know, that, the way that the sort of music industry is changing now, um, it's, it's all about live music, which is which is great, you know, because there's so many places to play, there's so many people to come and, and watch what's going on. You know, as the sort of industry changes, it becomes more and more, you know, which is great for us. I mean, we get to go out and play all the time everywhere, which is, you know, that's, that's what we want to do. That's what we love. That's the way we like we like to be on the road and doing it. And, you know, that's, it's, a, it's a good thing that the music industry is changing in the way that it is, really, in, in that respect, and that it is much more back towards live music. And you've got to love being on the road pretty much all of your time. 
Um, but I guess if you didn't want that, then you've got to question why you were doing it in the first place. <laughs> well, I mean, that's an interesting point because, you know, at the end of the day, I, I'm always going to have, regardless of um, whether a band or artist is my musical taste, if they've, shall we say, honed their craft on the road and done the whole transit van thing, so to speak, then, you know, I'm going to take, you know, there's a bit more credibility there. Sure. The way that it is now, if you want to survive as like uh, as a musician, it's you know you've got to be out on the road all all the time. I, mean, I know certainly the last few years. Um, I mean, a couple of years ago, I did like over over three hundred shows in one year in like ten different countries. And you know, certainly it's been like the last last couple of years, it's been several hundred shows a year. You know, at, at least two hundred shows every year. Um, it's just it's the way that it is. It's good. It's good. Um, it's good to be out. It's, it's the most fun part of all, really, because. You know, that's when you get into actually meet people and play your thing. I mean, making records is fun um, when you get to really sort of work on and hone the thing that you're doing in the studio. But the real fun part is being out like, gigging and, you know, playing to people and the whole vibe that goes with that. And, you know, the, the vibe that you get from the crowd and the vibe that, the, that you sort of give to the crowd and the way that builds, and you know, until it's sort of... Uh, until everybody's hopefully lost in in the moment, really. You know, and that's, it's, it's a really special thing, I think, that... If I could just ask you about the studio and obviously the recording this album, uh, were all of you together in the studio at the same time or did you do individual parts separate? Because that seems to be a lot of a trend, certainly uh, as something else I've brought up on numerous occasions with certainly that the project bands, obviously you've got people scattered around everywhere, so they're not necessarily recording together. Well, it was a bit of an interesting situation, this one, really. Um, I've been working with uh, the producer Alex Bikeskip for the last couple of years and... Um, I've been working with Toby, uh, who plays drums with us, Toby Murray, uh, for a couple of years as well. And, um, but back last year I did sort of a lot of solo stuff. He went away to go and do some cruise ship work. Basically came back and was like, I never want to do this again for, in the rest of my life. We're making an album. Uh, you've got me for this amount of time. So it, so it was basically an idea, really, right. that myself and uh, myself and Toby and uh, Alex have. The, the album, it, we, I went, we worked with a lot of different session musicians, um, some of it was very, very live, like Black Cat, is it like a one-take thing that we did in the studio along mm. with the video? Other things took, you know, um, we recorded a lot of it in Bristol in, in my friend's studio here, and it, we, we just put it together piece by piece, really. Like the, the band was actually more of an idea than a reality when we started recording. Uh, and we just sort of worked through it for, from October through till about March and brought a lot of friends in to, to play on different stuff. And, you know, just in the studio, if someone was around, it was like, hey, do you fancy playing the bass on this? Or... Do you fancy playing a bit of piano on that? And we just put it together as an idea, really. And, and the band was sort of de- developed out of that. Um, you know, Pete, we ended up playing with that. We had a bit of a spinal tap situation with bass players for a while. <laughs> like, uh, where, what, like uh, one of them fell, he fell off his bike, and uh, Luke Barter fell off his bike and broke his hip. Then we had Tim Loudon playing bass for us for a while. I played bass on some of it. Alex played bass on some of it. Uh, we ended up with Pete, uh, who was like depping for our, for our, our other bass player, Tim Loudon, that we had, and we just ended up sticking with Pete. And he, he basically got thrown in at the deep end in March, and I think we took him, uh, yeah, we just sort of took him on tour, um, basically, and we've just been working with him with him ever since. So, he, like, the, 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 the album led to the band, essentially, more than the band was in place before we recorded the album. So it was a kind of funny way of going about doing it. Um, but, you know, it's, it, now things have developed. We have a very sort of strong... Like we're a very sort of strong relationship as a band, and we're about to start work. Well, we've already started working on our next album, um, so we, we were sort of back in the studio in January to to crack on with that. But on a on a different keel, knowing exactly who we're working with and what we're doing, and we've, we've got a sort of a, a much sort of uh, much different approach to doing the next one than this one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, John, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. I wish you all the success with the album. It'll be great if um, you guys come down to my neck of the woods in Kent, because certainly we'd go to see you at someone like the Beaverwood, because I, I think you'd go down the storm there for certain. And well, uh, certainly you know, hopefully, fingers able... crossed, we can get you. Well, we're going to be out touring again in, uh, in uh, February, I think. You know, we're going to do the UK in February, and then uh, we're off over to Ireland to do a sort of fairly extensive tour over there in March. But yeah, we'd love to come down, absolutely. Fabulous stuff, John. Thanks ever so much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Cheers now. Cheers. Bye-bye.